Scott here, and uh, I'm just chucking a little bit, even as the context that built up how I'm going to make this particular video, kind of the, the theme of brokenness and what to do with it. Um, yesterday was full of that, as you probably realize I'm just using my phone right now, because the mic I've been using, it turns out it actually was broken. It took me a while yesterday to figure out it wasn't just a battery issue, and um, I apologize to people at the church I was at. Anyway, so, but now, you know, very clear today um, that the mic is broken. And yesterday, like yesterday, I made a video here. None of them came out, but I, you know, because the mic was broken. I didn't realize that was happening. And I was even at this tree back here. And I, I wasn't really using it in exactly the same way that I want to today because one of the things that even hit me as I looked at it, and I'm going to try to make sure you can see what, what's kind of special and unique about this tree, is it got blown over in a storm and it broke about halfway up, you know, the trunk broke and that part of the tree went into the ground over here and that part did die, right? But it went in so deeply, I mean, that, I don't know how deep it's going, but the tree's still a foot around right there. It held the tree up in that position of that arch. And then the tree, you know, drawing on its roots, that must have stayed strong enough, then went up and followed the branches, became the new line of the main shoot of the tree, you might say. And it's, it's both beautiful, but in a way that still, like the thought that went through my head as I looked at it, it's like that tree will never not be broken. Its brokenness is a big part of how it's even living now. And what an image when you think about it. And I was, you know, saying, well, that's an inspiring tree. And, and even for the time we're going through right now, right? And it got me thinking about, you know, when you think about what's happening right now, this idea, like the tree back here, it would be, you know, the ideal of a tree is to grow up straight and true, right? Well, it didn't get that opportunity, right? And a storm blew through that took away that opportunity. But then as it worked with its brokenness, it actually found life in a new way. That actually, you know, it became an archway even over what was naturally, this is just where the deer trail went that Anita cut buckthorn to cut this path through here. It just naturally came under, actually two, two different arches. And we have a few trees like this, and it's just interesting, you know, how Mother Nature does this. And it's like, huh, it's kind of inspiring, especially right now when I think, you know, our world is going through the storm of the coronavirus, and some people are being utterly broken, right? Having to say goodbye to loved ones or their livelihood or their own health, or, <clears throat> excuse me, um, you know, um, or they're in that zone where their livelihood's gone right now, but then maybe it'll come back, and, you know, we're kind of in that right now with our, having to shut down our businesses, but they should come back, and, but, you know, there's unknowns and fears with that, and, and then, or you're on the front lines, and thank you if you are, and just pray for those people that are, and support them. I know a woman who, yeah, she says her prayer time is more important now than ever. I believe that because, you know, what she's doing is just taking all she can't control to God. And what's that, 90, 95%, 99% of what's going on? And just trying to pay attention to what she can control. And that's the space she's coming from. So trying to come from her heart as she's serving people in the way she does. And I, thank God, that's beautiful. You know, so I'm just trying to support her in that. And thank, thank you to her and everyone that's doing that. And then some of us, we just have more time to reflect, you know, and so that would be, okay, as a storm took that script you had of, you know, this, whatever the image was you had of a, a life that would have been growing up straight and true or whatever that, you know, like the, you, maybe you have to set that script down right now, the particulars, those details. And that's, you know, that's what the ego doesn't want to do that, but it's understandable. But well, right now it's good to just set that script down and then focus our energies, our attention on all right, how do I draw from the roots, right? In this case, it would be our own hearts that, you know, are rooted in God. I think the idea of being born in the image of God is that God is love, and we are little hearts born from that great heart, you might say, that desire to love and be loved and live a life flowing with love, coming from within. Well, that, I think we all want that. And that's because that's we're born in the image of God, and that's a good thing. So that's how you align with God, is be true to that, the values there, right? 
more than any particular script of how you think life should look, right? And this is why, as we're open then to God guiding us in that, this is why I want to make this video because it kind of blew me away last night. When after having that experience with this tree yesterday and thinking about it a little bit, but then making a video kind of focused elsewhere, last night as I was getting ready for bed, um, you know, I turn, turn to tools often to just get ready for meditation because sometimes I feel like, you know, it would be helpful to have something. And So it can be the Bible, it can be um, any devotional material, it can be, but the whole thing is any tool you use, I always bathe it in prayer. In other words, God, do help me to get in tune with whatever you want me to see right now. And so anyway, I use the Divine Feminine Oracle that I have on my phone, and that's because I'm trying to be more open to the mom side of God, the father side too, but but to kind of making up for lost time, right? Um, being open to the mom's side. So anyway, I kid you not. I mean, you can't make this stuff up. I could have made it up, but I didn't, I promise you. The goddess that came up was Akilanda. Well, let me just, <laughs> her full name, Akiladanshavari in Sanskrit means female power or goddess. And she's the goddess of being never not broken. Wow. And as I read more about her, right? She's the Hindu avatar of change, crises, and the events in our lives that leave us in a crumpled heap, feeling broken, lost, and unsure of what comes next. Well, I think we're all feeling that. Her existence acknowledges the profound shock of losing the foundations that our identity was built on. And at the same time recognizes that we do go on. Because we do, don't we? We're eternal souls. You know, in human expression right now, in this form, right? But even that's gonna change someday. So the main question is, since I am gonna exist one way or another, what, with what spirit do we want to move? And Akilanda is this beautiful spirit. There isn't a lot written about her because the whole idea is she never stays attached to any particular form. She's much more about, she's very associated with water. She's about the flow of love that gives life, however that needs to look. So you create as you move with the flow. The different forms, the different shapes are created as the flow is happening and you stay true to the flow. I love, you know, she lets forms break to stay open to the movement of life, to the flow of the love that gives life as life goes on. So when the heart breaks, right, she reveals that it also expands. So to move with the expansion. Wow, that is, that's powerful stuff. So how to practice that now in whatever way is true for you, right? Um, yeah. So I just invite you, I just give you that food for thought, you know, that that's what I'm trying to do. Be open to that Holy Spirit. You know, often the Holy Spirit is seen as the, the more feminine part of the, you know, triune God in Christianity. So you can go there if that's your background, Christian background. But if it's elsewhere, you know, it's like just the spirit behind within all of life that you can experience, you know, like being out here. When we do meditation, I'll move back so that you can kind of focus on this tree and the insight it offers and be open to that. You know, it's, it's both the rootedness that makes getting through the brokenness possible, right? So centering ourselves, working from that, part of our desire to love and be loved and then be in tune with love but then reach for the light from there right because that also is part of the journey of life right without condemning the brokenness it, it can actually become a tool of greater even greater capacity to love and that's beautiful and that's what this goddess is all about so okay so let's get ready for meditation so I invite you to get comfortable. I'm gonna say a few things. Um, I'll try to keep that to a minimum, <laughs> sorry. And then I'll let you know when I'm gonna stop talking so you can do your process, whatever that is, okay? All right. So I always take a few deep breaths. <sighs> 